So this is it. The world we're fighting for. Westeros and Essos. You can see that winter has started to spread, so to speak. And uh, right now we're kind of in the middle of all of this uh, ridiculous war against an enemy that is quite ridiculous. Once again, the White Walkers have done more damage than we thought that they could. And uh, I'm not exactly sure where we'll end up or how we'll end up doing this. But it would be wrong not to try. So you can see the uh, the extent over here, 25,000 whites, 70,000 whites. Attrition hasn't really affected these guys nearly as much as I thought that it would. When you stack an army of 70,000 men, you suffer attrition. But I guess if you're, uh, if you're already dead, you can't die again, so... Yeah. Now I did promise um, before that we would periodically check in on our uh, our self-made emperor over here, the High King Gars of Giscar, who's a liberator, former slave. He has married a former Southron girl, lowborn, Queen Arena, and has become Relor. I don't think he was R'hllor before. It has become R'hllor. I like that, uh, the sigil for House Smith, the interlocking chain with the, with the lock in the middle. I like that. The crossed chain with lock is what we'll call it. So, um, we can demand important prisoners from Quinton. I wonder who he has. Yorka Nazar. I don't know who that is. That's fine. I don't know, I don't know exactly who that would be anyways. Um, let's see. That's really all that we can accomplish up there. If we go back to Westeros, you can see I've amassed most of our army right here. Um, I don't think I'll be able to. I can actually, yeah, I can embark that army. We have 341 ships in the docks at King's Landing. We have an army of 26,000 men, and then an army of 5,000 Northmen marching south. Um, really, the only way that we're going to be able to win this war is to stack all of our men together, and then have me lead. The ageless wonder, the 70-year-old King Aegon the Mad of the Iron Throne, who has now waged war on the White Walkers three times, has won twice. He has got an undefeated record <laughs> against the White Walkers when it comes down to it. And so this is maybe his, his most important, uh, the most important war because it is the most difficult. And uh, somebody made the comment on the last video that the lore that this playthrough is creating is so crazy. You know, the, the Aegon who, who conquered the Stormlands and then conquered the Iron Throne and then brought peace to Westeros and marched north to defeat the White Walkers in Westeros. And after a reign of relative peace, uh, marched north again to defeat the White Walkers again, not knowing how they ended up coming back and uh, perpetual winter settled in on King's Landing and hasn't lifted and thinking that there was nothing that they could do had almost given up hope of doing anything uh, to end winter and then all of a sudden in the east a raven arrived declaring that the ancient demons known as the Others had taken up land in Essos and that there was almost nothing 
that could be done. Why do I have this little army right here? Are these guys my vassals somehow? Goodness. The Valerians have... Torturers Deep. And are my vassals. Well, that doesn't make any sense. I don't even know, I don't even know that these guys can be called High Valerians. They're like m completely muddled. Anyways, I'm going to disband this 62 man army. And uh continue with my story. <laughs> and so now Aegon has uh called all of the lords and ladies of the Seven Kingdoms to send their most able men to King's Landing to board ships to cross the globe, basically. Look, we have more men over here. We could probably stop there. I don't know that I want us going through Valyria, though. Now would not be the time for us to attempt to do that. But to cross the globe and to fight. That's what this war is. To fight. To fight men that I'm not sure. Why? I'm, a, I'm stranded over here. That's crazy. I had forgotten about that. I need to not be leading this army. Um, but to fight the ancient enemy and to reclaim the dawn. So in this massive army we have over in Westeros, we, uh, we have a couple of different options here. We can, uh, we will obviously lead the vanguard because we have monstrous traits that make us the perfect leader of the center, uh, those notwithstanding being organizer and inspiring leader, and also dragon rider. All of those make for a great command in the center. Uh, on the flank, we're going to have Jaehaerys. Um, though his martial skill is not as high as the other two options, uh, he is also a dragon rider. He is a unyielding defender, um, which is good. Um, because my plan is to land our army and let the walkers come to us and to take up a defensive position, so to speak, but also to make sure that wherever we land is not mountains or a place where our dragons cannot be used. Uh, we have to be able to use the dragons in order to make this work. And because I'm unfamiliar with the, t with the terrain over in this particular area of Essos, um, we could end up with some issues because uh, we could end up in unfavorable terrain and me not really have an idea of that going forward, I'm not sure. So uh, we're going to do our best to keep an eye out where our army goes on all the different factors leading into that. Um, we have uh, Morgan Riker, uh, who is a brilliant commander, um, a defender, and a cavalry leader. And uh, we also have Gilbert Aaron, who is a lightfoot leader and a siege leader. We'll use him for when we start to siege down our territories, uh, the winter territories over there. But Morgan Riker is going to take up the other flank as a defender. I trust him. So, that is the command of the army of Westeros. And uh, really, we only have to wait for this, uh, this army from the north to finish traveling. So we're going to go ahead and progress forward as we do. We'll let them continue to march down. Okay, so we're gonna reforge the Valyrian steel sword that we found at Old Stones. Uh, we're gonna choose Moreo because he is uh, he has nine learning. And the other option has five and is also dishonorable. So what I wouldn't want is for the blacksmith to run off with a Valyrian steel sword. So we're gonna choose and we're going to uh, we're gonna pick a Valyrian steel sword that we like. There's Mother's Grief, there's Black Death, there's Glory, there's Skin Peeler, there's Delpino. That's a hybrid of a mace and a javelin. That's crazy. There's Good Sword, 
It's a. It sounds like something like a Stark would name a sword. Uh, there's the Dornish Kiss. There's Father's Fury. There's Talon, which would make a great sword for uh, the Aarons, but I digress. There's Jade. There's Kingmaker. There's Passion. There's Stranger's Touch. Morning Mace. Titan's Bite. Um, Dragon Bane. Finger Eater. Rock a Rock. Hmm. So I'm thinking either Kingmaker. Yeah, I'm thinking we do Kingmaker. And we, uh, we approach this with the, the mindset that um, it goes to the Crown Prince. And the King keeps uh, the normal, the natural um, sword uh, Blackfire of House Targaryen. So I think that that's what we're going to do. We're going to go Kingmaker, Fire and Blood. Amazing. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to check in on my heir, uh, Prince Baylor of Giscar. I don't know why he's called of Giscar, but I suppose that's where he was born. So maybe that that plays into it. So we have ourselves the making of a great heir right now. At the age of nine, he's a skilled fighter, which means he still has six years under my edu my education. So my my uh, um, my guide to uh, grow into a formidable fighter. And actually, in the meantime, I'm actually going to, uh, let's see, assign Guardian. We're going to assign him a uh, formidable fighter as, uh, yep, here we go. Lord Commander of the King's Guard, right there. Um, actually, you know what? Um, we're gonna do that until he's 12. That's, that's how we're going to approach this until he's 12, and then I'm going to be his guardian. Because though I cannot make him a uh, formidable fighter, I need to have control over <laughs> where his, uh, his childhood stats take him. So, uh, yeah, we'll do this until, until he's 12. And hope that he gains the trait formidable fighter in the meantime. Uh, he is currently betrothed to Princess Rainey's, my true-born daughter. So another shot at a, at a trueborn daughter. Um, and I didn't even look. Was my other daughter named Rainies? She was. Oh man. Aegon, you fool. <laughs> two daughters named Rainies. That's funny. Uh, two wives named Daenerys, so I guess that, that that makes sense. I don't know. Targaryens are weird. And I forgot I'm supposed to give him the sword. So yeah, Grant Kingmaker. That's what we're doing. So now he has a Valerian steel sword, and uh, hopefully that does him well as he grows into a formidable fighter as our heir. So there we go, the Northern Army arrived, 31,000 men. It's about half of the largest chunk of their army, basically, and uh, about a third of their total forces. And so we're going to embark that army we are going to sell over here. Uh, we need to look and see. Uh, so this is farmland. So this would be a good location for us. And this is where they kind of are. Um, what we what we may want to do is, is land right here. That way we have more uh, time in case they decide to attack us. When, uh, when your army first comes off of the boat, uh, their um, morale is not as high as it should be. Um, at best, it's half. And so um, it would be better if we uh, approach this with kind of the, uh, the mindset of, okay, let's give us some space to gain our morale back and then march around. So this is jungle. I don't know... This is jungle. I don't know if we can actually fight in jungle with dragons. I don't know. I've never had the opportunity to do that, so <laughs> I guess we'll find out. But definitely farmlands we can. 
Uh, and then we're kind of surrounded by jungle up here, but this is farmlands as well, so... Um, yeah, so all along the coast here is farmland, so we should be good as long as we land anywhere on this coast. Uh, whereas, like here, those are mountains. Definitely can't right there. Hills, we probably can. Um, so yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna sail right here to this stretch of water. And while we're sailing, a uh, shameless plug for uh, the playthrough that uh, hit episode three yesterday, which is uh, the Lannister playthrough. If you haven't gone and seen that, uh, you totally should, because it's, uh, it's already taken a crazy turn, and I think it's going to get crazier uh, as we go forward with it. So yeah, if you want to see the Lannister playthrough, make sure you go check that out. Honey,